All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, any questions about anything before we get going? Okay, so got a few more things I want to do with arc lengths. All right, so let's kind of recall how this process works. I have a curve here, y equals natural log of cosine x, and I want to find its arc length over that x interval. So how do we approach that? What kind of things do we need to do? You can find the derivative for y. Okay, so I need to find the derivative. So y equals the natural log of cosine x. Is this a derivative we can do? So if we don't know how to do this directly, like what? Can we think about to help us set this up? Chain rule. Why do we need to use the chain rule? Okay, so we need to use the chain rule. I have an inner and outer function. What are those inner and outer functions? I'll call them f and g. So if I'm calling g the inner function, and f the outer function, let's define those right now. What is f of x and what's g of x? U of x is cosine x. Natural log of what? Yeah, natural log of x. So I believe if I compose f of g, I will get natural log of cosine of x. So what's the derivative of each one of these things? This is 1 over x. And the derivative of cosine is? Minus sine of x. Okay. So all of that helps us find out that y prime is equal to what? One over cosine x times negative sine of x. Does this simplify for us at all? Negative tangent x. Okay, so we got the derivative y prime equals negative tangent x. I agree we need that. Now how do we go? How do we go forward with that? Go ahead, Colin. Well, the uh, equation is like square root of one plus the derivative of y squared. Right. So square root of one plus the derivative squared. over my bounds of zero to pi over four. So the negative is gonna get canceled when I square. So I have the square root of one plus tangent squared X DX. Is this an integral I can do? What does that come out to be? So okay, so one plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared, right? So square root of one, the square root of secant squared is going to be secant of x dx. So this is one of those integrals that's deceptively tricky. I think it was on one of the tables I gave you. I think the the Integral of secant x is the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. How are we doing? All right, can we evaluate this integral now? 
I'll give myself a little more space. So the natural log of secant of pi over four plus tangent of pi over four minus the natural log of secant zero plus tangent zero. What's the secant of pi over four? Root two. What's the tangent of pi over four? Okay, so natural log of root two plus one minus the natural log of secant zero is one and tangent of zero is zero. So natural log of radical two plus one minus the natural log of one. This just becomes the natural log of radical two plus one. How are we doing? Questions? All right. Okay. I want to set up this integral for this arc length. Not necessarily evaluate the whole thing, but let's at least set it up. So I have this curve, x, y equals 1. And I want to find this arc length between those two points. So I'll take my cues from you. How do you want to start? Find the derivative of y. Find the derivative of y? So you want to solve for y first? Yeah. Okay. So we have not really done it the opposite way, but is that possible? Can we, can we have a function for x written in terms of y and still use this process? So yeah, I mean, it's so... Unlike what we've done with volume, this this process is pretty well symmetric. We're, like, we're not rotating. We're not generating something new out of this curve. We are simply finding how long it is. But if we want to stick with y equals 1 over x, we can do that. Now, what do I do with this thing? What's that? Find this derivative. What is the derivative of... 1 over x, negative 1 over x squared. All right, so we got the derivative. A little closer to finding that inner, or setting up that integral, so what else do we have to do? Find the bounds. What are the bounds going to be? 1 to 2, are we sure? Why are the bounds one to two? Because we're going on the next values. Going out, that's exactly it. So we have set this up. So we defined our function y in terms of x, which means its derivative better be in terms of x. So yeah, we're essentially setting up an integral that's in terms of x, which means our bounds have to be expressed that way too. Now, what is the in, what is the the integrand? What's the thing we're going to integrate? We agree with that. Okay, I'll simplify it just one bit. Is this an integral we can evaluate? I think it would take some doing, but I think it's possible. But something I, I would rather do is Let's at least set this up um, in the opposite direction. So for the other variable. So 
this right here is all, you know, in terms of X. So what would this look like if we set this up for a function of X where X is expressed as, is a, as an expression of Y? So how do we start that process? Exact same way? Change the bounds. What are the bounds going to be now? What's that? One and one half. Is it one to one half? So that's a good question. Does it matter which way I set these bounds up? I mean, it should come out positive because is there any possible way? So let's look into the radical here. And we have, we're, we're, so this is not general. This is, a, this is an example, but is there any way for what's underneath these radicals to be negative? No. Why not? I'm squaring something and then I'm adding one to it, right? So not only can it never be negative, I don't need, I don't even think it could ever be zero. It must, it will strictly be positive. So um, mathematically, you're not going to wind up with a negative value for arc length. Um, I also believe that this would give me the same value if I did this. Uh, that's what I had. I'm going to probably hurt your eyes to even see that written that way, but I believe that would give you the same value. So mathematically, I don't think it matters. Um, I think we're a little more used to having the lower bound actually be a lesser number. So I'll, either way is fine, but I'll, I'll, I'll call it one half to one. Go ahead. So why are we doing this, like that second step? The like second the step. One half to one. Why don't we just get the integral in the first time? Why is that oh, because I'm I'm just I just want to set it up both using both variables. Oh, okay. So, so like, we're gonna get an inner. It won't look the same. So, but if we were to evaluate these integrals, yeah, they would look the same. I don't believe these integrals are gonna look identical. I mean, the bounds are already wrong, right? Wrong. The bounds already don't match. But we know, but like if we were trying to get the arc length, we would just need one set. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, since we haven't done it yet, I at least want to want us to see what it looks like if we go the opposite, okay. the unfamiliar way. All right, so the bounds are different. What else am I going to have to do? I'm going to isolate x. I isolated y before, so x equals 1 over y. Now what? The derivative, so the derivative, x prime is what? Negative one over y squared. So a lot of symmetry there. So then what's the thing I'm integrating? So the integrand itself is basically up to you just renaming the variables. Identical, right? So let's box in the two things we found. So here's the integral in the x direction. Here's the integral using y as the independent variable. So obviously don't those don't look identical, but they will give you an identical value. Does it make sense that the arc length? So, I mean, how long is the interval for that top? How long is the interval for the first integral we found? What's what one unit, right? And how about the bottom one? Does it make sense that does it does it cause anybody trouble? Those are going to have the same arc length. The the interval we're looking at doesn't look the same. So maybe it's worthwhile to look at what this curve looks like, at least in the first quadrant. One over x does what? Has asymptotes at each axis. So it kind of looks like this, right? So here's zero. One is about here. 
one half. Let's say one half is there. Think about the way this thing behaves between one half and one and one to two. So even though the interval is only half as long, what's happening between that one half and one is there's a lot more vertical change than there is between one and two. So yeah, it might seem counterintuitive. They're going to have the same length, but they, they will end up having the same length. How are we doing? Okay. Take it away. You want to stay with Y or solve for X? Yeah. I don't even know if I could make that change. Okay. So how should I get started beyond that? Take a derivative. <laughs> So dy dx. Is equal to what? X squared. What happens with one over four X? Minus one over four X squared. We agree. The person who said it doesn't seem sure, so take a look at it. You all said this with a pretty close to absolute certainty a little bit ago, right? The derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. So um, knowing that you, you you all seem much more eager to do this with integrals than you are with derivatives, but with derivatives you can kind of pull out multiplied constants take a derivative and then reintroduce the constant. That's essentially what you're doing here with one over four X. It's really the same derivative. It's still one over X, you just have a fourth of it. So which means your derivative should be a fourth of one over X squared. All right, so I think we have the derivative. Now what? What's that? Le also oh, integral is equal to Right, are we okay with that? It's always gonna be one plus. Yes. Do you need a reminder about why? Okay, so the first one we did was very general on purpose. Oh, that's not it? Yeah, it is, okay. So basically when we first talked about how to approximate an arc length, we basically took our non-linear thing and split it up into a bunch of straight line segments. Um, so how do you find the length of one of those straight line segments? Essentially with Pythagorean theorem. So uh, plus change in y squared, square root that whole thing. If I basically multiply through, under, like multiply under the radical, dx squared or dx squared, I basically, and that's where I got this, you know, square root of one plus dy dx squared thing. So yeah, that one is, it's never going to be anything different. All right, is this an integral we can do? I don't have any idea. Um, let's do a little more simplified. So if I square, if I have yeah, four out this uh, set of parentheses here, what does that become? One plus X to the fourth.
minus two times x squared times negative one over four x squared is gonna be minus one half plus one over 16 x to the fourth dx. Did that get any easier? If it did, I'm not seeing now. Is there anything else we can do? What What would you use for you? X squared. X squared? If you did u equals x squared, then what? I don't think there's a way for the dx to be dealt with because if u equals x squared, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the setup good. And often that will be as far as I ask you to go because if you haven't noticed by now, sometimes, sometimes the integral you set up is very not trivial. So I mean, all the ones we did with area between curves or area under a single curve and volumes, we kind of arrived at these integrals that were at least computable. Um, this one that I know you could go to a table with or go to like Wolfram or Symbo Lab or something and get, um, I'm not seeing a way forward by hand. And often there will not be an obvious one. But any questions on how we set up the integral? Do I have stupid? Okay. All right. So this time I'm basically giving you a function in the function of x or a function for x in terms of y. Take it away. What do we do first? Simplify. Simplify? How do you want to simplify? Just multiplying. Okay. So if you want to, uh, yeah. So then x equals one third of what? We can expand this, but how does it how does it distribute? One third y to the three halves minus one. Y, y to the three halves minus what? Uh, root y. Okay, we agree with that. Okay, if that's true, where do we go with that? Find the derivative, which I'll call dx dy. What is dx dy? What's the derivative of one third y to the three halves? One, ooh, one half what? One half, I'll call it y to the one half now. But I believe that's true. And the derivative of negative radical y? Two. 
Because that's what I think I heard. Am I it's one over Okay. All right. So one over two root y. Okay. So I got the derivative. Now what? Plug it into what? And x prime is all the stuff we just found. I'm going to go back to roots. Radical y. No, one half radical y. That's not what I meant to write. How do we feel about that? I think what we can do. I think it's going to be the same kind of story. I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to be something that's, that's like feasible to do by hand. Any questions? So do I want to do this last one? Okay, it's a little bit different thing here. I don't want to find the arc length over some like given fixed interval. I want to find the arc length from some starting point to some generic like terminating point. So basically, I want to find my arc length from one one to x y wherever that is. And what are we Isn't no, we're basically just trying to come. We're trying to define a function that gives the arc length. So I'm going to draw a diagram. This diagram probably has nothing to do with this curve. I just I'm trying to just kind of organize it. So I know this curve goes through one one right, and then it does. Who knows? Um, I want to find a function that for any value of x, so basically let's say if this is this is one, I'll make a few different points here, five, seven, ten. So basically the function f that I want to make is this. If I say f of five, that gives me the arc length from x equals one to x equals five. If I say f equals 7, that better give me something bigger, right? What should f of 1 be? 0. So, I mean, if we have to start, start basically, I'm fixing the starting point. I'm letting the terminal point on the right be variable. All right. So, do we understand the, the, the setup? Okay. How do we go forward with that? Find the derivative of y. So what is dy dx? 2x. Minus, Minus 1 over 8x. OK. And then put on the integral from the 1 to the e. Um, OK, so the integral from 1 to t. Why T? Like okay. Okay. Of what? Of the derivative of one plus uh, the derivative of three. Like that? Okay. So this will tell us the arc length from one to x, x equals T. This function right here, 
I want to call it F. We call it F, but kind of a tricky thing. What symbol goes inside this parentheses? T. Yeah, basically, X is the thing that. What's the job that X does in this function? Kind of a subtle thing. Maybe, maybe let's talk about T first. What's the job of T in this function? Like, let's pick one. Let's say T equals 15. It tells you the length of the interval, right? But that, but basically T is the top end of that. Of that yeah, it tells you the upper bound of the integral. If T is 15, then what is X going to do? Right. So what do we do with X? If you kind of think about the way that Riemann sums or integrals work, basically if T is 15, then X is just going to take on every single value from 1 to 15. Every single, I mean, there's infinitely many of them, but that's essentially what X does. X is the thing that really varies. T is, once you pick a value of T, it's more or less constant. But even though we're not used to functions that are defined this way with an integral inside them, that's that's where I'm going to leave it. How are we doing? Okay. So that's all I have for you for arc length. So we're going to move on to our last section in this chapter. I'm going to skip one of them. But we're going to talk about uh, some applications to physics and engineering. I'm not sure why the section's called this. It really, the, the, it's work. Um, so those of you, has anyone here taken, or you've all, have you all taken physics before? Either here or prior? So when I mention work in this context, so in, you know, mechanical, Mechanical work, what does that refer to? What's that? It's related to energy. There's another definition we're going to kind of focus on. But yeah, there, if you relate it to energy, like if you have energy that transfers in or, in or out of a system, that's work done. But another way to think about, um, think about work is this idea of, and I'll kind of work backwards, if you have a force that displaces an object, then that product is the work. Basically, what was the force that was in that, what was acting on the object? How far did the, dot, the object move? That force times that displacement is equal to the work. So basically, I put these definitions here under the assumption that no one had ever seen ideas of force, displacement, and work. So. There's probably at least one of you who have not seen these before. Let's let's talk about them in as much detail as we need to. But for a force, we're going to be very general on purpose about what a force is. Just think about it. anything that anything that's a push or a pull on an object. Gravity is pulling you downward. The floor is forcing you upward. Um, but anything that causes a push or a pull, uh, displacement. Uh, any di like a difference between where something starts and where something ends is a displacement. And work is essentially, I mean, there's lots of ways to define work. The way we're going to focus on is that product of force and displacement. Has anyone not seen any of these definitions before? Yeah. So a lot of us are going to focus on Newton's second law of motion. Um, because when you're talking about force, you're by definition talking about acceleration. Um, the biggest acceleration we're going to focus on is gravity. If you're lifting something straight up, so when you when you pick something up, what force are you counteracting? Gravity, right? So something's weight, which is the force of gravity, is the work you is basically it's the force you have to work against. Um. You'll see both SI units and imperial units in here. So force measured in newtons, mass measured in kilograms. So basically all your SI units that 
you know, if you've taken lab science classes, um, these are probably the ones you've used almost exclusively, if not totally exclusively. But we also see pounds and feet, the ones that are more collo colloquially used. I promise not to mix them. I'm not trying to trick you, but know that you'll see both. Yeah, let's move on. So, how much work is being done if I'm lifting a 20 pound weight 30 feet off the ground? So, don't need any calculus for this one, but I just kind of want to get us warmed up to talking about these these quantities. Um, how do we find how do we find work? So work is equal to force times displacement, right? What is the force? So if I'm lifting this object up, what's the force I have to apply to it? 20 what? 20 pounds. So yeah, we've been kind of, you know, liberal with the units up to now, but now we've got to be careful about them. The force is 20 pounds. So what's the displacement? 30 feet which means the work is equal to 600 watts, foot-pounds, pound-feet. I've seen both, but I think foot-pounds is probably a little more common. So 600 foot-pounds of work to move this object. Any questions so far before we get a little more involved? Okay. So constant forces are one thing. We've got to get calculus involved if the forces vary. So maybe you're not lifting a 20 pound object. Maybe you're lifting like a bucket of water that has a leak in it. So even though it's displacement, it's easy to see. It's the force you're actually applying to it is a little more complicated to think about. So in general, Work is still this product, force times displacement. But sometimes your force varies. So you have to have a way to account for that varying that variation, which is where the integration comes in. If I can if I can express my force as a function of some variable or as a function of my distance variable, and then integrate over whatever my displacement is. That will allow me to calculate my work exact, exactly even when the force is not something simple. So I have a particle, an object located X feet from the origin, and I have a force with this, this expression, X squared plus 2X, acting on it. So I want to know how much work is needed to move it from those from position A to position B. So should I walk you through this one or do you want to throw me some ideas? So the integral from three to seven. Okay, let's talk about that. Do we agree with this integral? So am I still multiplying force times displacement? Very generally, I am. What's that? Right, what am I doing with those bounds? And here's the thing that I think kind of gets lost here is, so yes, Mathematically, like how do I calculate an integral? You find the antiderivative of this thing, you plug in the upper bound, you plug in the lower bound, you find the difference, right? So it seems like when you so it seems like an integral has to do with the bounds, but not really with all the values in between. Um, and it gets kind of hidden, but really you are dealing with every single x value between three and seven. So I am really getting that full four meters feet to the full four feet of displacement and accounting for it so yes the bounds are going to give me that distance um 
Where does x squared plus 2x come from? That's the force. So I am integrating force over a distance. Essentially, I'm going to be getting a product for force times distance. So this integral is perfect. So now, knowing that the setup is good, what do I do with it? All right, how do I integrate it? x cubed over 3 plus x squared evaluated from 3 to 7. 7 cubed is, I think, 343. 9 minus 18 is 31. I don't really believe that. Somebody help. Is it three three? Is that not what seven cubed is? Somebody with a calculator made me feel better about this. Forty thirty six. Okay. All right. We okay with that number? What units have to go with it? Foot pounds. Is that a unit we've seen before? No? Those of you who have, probably not in relation to work, but with torque, but it's the same unit, totally different idea. Any questions about how we calculated this one? Okay. Oh, question's already on there. So, not giving you an algebraically defined function this time, giving you a graph. So I want to know how much work is done by that force to move that object eight meters. So we've talked about force a couple of different ways. First was that product, force times distance. <clears throat> We've also talked about using an integral to set that up. I'm not giving you a function that you can integrate algebraically. So what could we do to find that work in this case? Find the area underneath that. I mean, it's weird to call it a curve, but essentially that's what you're doing. Find the area underneath that, underneath that red, the red graph. What does the red, yeah, what do the red line segments represent? Force is, force is a function of, yeah, of distance. So, yeah, the area underneath that is going to give you basically where if you're integrating the force is a function of x over what interval? Zero to eight. So basically, this is the integral we're going to find. We're just going to find it geometrically as opposed to algebraically. <laughs> so, how can we find this? How can we find this integral for the value of it? Go ahead. Split it where? Okay. So. Let's put it up in these two shapes. I'll call this area one, area two. So basically what you're doing is this, the integral from zero to four, f of x dx, plus the integral from four to eight, So for that first sub-interval, let's find that. 
what's that what's that work going to be over the first four meters 60 how'd you get 60 four times 30 times okay so area of a triangle 60 watts it's joules. Newton times meter, that's a joule. Um, how about the work on the other side of this interval? Plus 120, right? So full work of 180 joules. Questions? Um, I don't know if I want to get into a hook's law in the last two minutes here. So let's stop a little bit early. Um, if you want to stick around, if you have any questions, let me, go ahead. Right. So, I mean, we, we could have found the equation of that straight line and the equation of that horizontal line. But if what I'm really after is the work and I can get there geometrically, that's fine too. Thank you.